welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. You worry, I worry, we all do. If you're paying attention to the world today, there's a lot for women to feel worried and anxious about. As we explore the worries with curiosity and compassion, we learn to live more authentically and unleash the warrior within, someone who is strong, capable, and resilient, come what may. It's time to stop battling against yourself and start using your powers to meet everyday challenges with energy, purpose, and bravery. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Cush. Welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cush, and I am a licensed clinical professional counselor in Annapolis, Maryland, seeing clients online right now. Um, right now, the coronavirus is still out there and causing a lot of distress. But what I'm finding a little bit difficult myself is that I have been pretty careful. My husband is a high risk, um, high risk person for the virus. So if he were to get it, it could become very serious pretty quickly. So we've been very, very, very careful. And although we're not isolating quite as extremely as we were at the beginning, uh, say in March and April, we're still being pretty careful. But what's interesting is I do find that there I'm sensing some judgment about how I'm handling the virus. And so I suppose I may be judging others for what I perceive as being too careless or not safe enough. Um, So I feel like there's a lot of judgment going on around about how we're handling it, whether I feel like others are handling it as well as they should, or um, feeling some judgment from others around my decision to stay safer and to not go out to eat inside restaurants and to continue to wear a mask, even if I'm walking outside and there isn't anyone in my immediate location. So I'm working hard not to judge others on how they're handling it. And I am hoping, working toward not judging myself around others judging me. So some self-compassion work happening and uh, some love and care for my parts that uh, want to blame or criticize others. Well, I hope that you are taking care of yourself, however you're handling the virus, however you're choosing to stay safe. I hope that you are feeling grounded and calm and okay with those decisions. So I'm very excited about my guest today, Dr. Carmen Roman. She is a a psychologist out in California, originally from Mexico, and she her spirit, her energy is so beautiful, and I just so appreciated her being on the podcast today. So Dr. Carmen Roman is the president of the nonprofit Emotions in Harmony and also the host of three podcasts, Emociones in Harmony, Armonia Emocional, and Ispirame. Dr. Roman is a clinical psychologist licensed in California and Mexico with 28 years experience. She specializes in trauma, sexual abuse, and immigration issues. Additionally, she has trained community leaders for 20 years in Mexico and the USA using the model of empowerment suggested by popular education theory. Dr. Roman works mainly with couples and families. Some clinical issues she works with are anxiety, depression, fear, severe trauma, and low self-esteem. She helps her clients to live with awareness, responsibility, and in the here and now. And she addresses issues of spirituality, the use of meditation, and shamanic experiences. She is a specialist in creative expression and therapy, 
at master and PhD levels. And she's also a meditation teacher for the Insight Timer community. Carmen shares how resilience has played a role in her clients being able to tolerate, but also find joy in these very difficult times, including the coronavirus, the political environment in our country today, but around the world, and also in particular for the residents of California, the wildfires that have been happening there. So uh, stay tuned, and we're going to get started with the conversation. Hi, Carmen, and welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. (laughs) Hi, thank you for having me here, Elizabeth. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on and excited that we got to connect earlier. And I would just love for you to uh, tell the audience, the listeners, a little bit about you and the work that you do. Well, in a nutshell, I have... Uh, the license in two countries. I have the license as a clinician in Mexico and in California. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did all 15 something years of private practice in Mexico. And when I moved here, the license doesn't translate. So I needed to start over with master and PhD. Wow. Yeah. So I got the license um, to California and currently in Arizona too. Mm. So yeah. when you moved here, like the, all of the licensing, all the schooling that you'd had in Mexico did not, you couldn't just say, here you go, take no. this. Yeah, boy. And I was already supervisor for a couple of years and the faculty member, no, nothing. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, I, and I know that that happens, but that's terrible. And that, but anyway, so yeah. you went back to school and got I your PhD. Back, <laughs> I went back to the master and the PhD and I didn't speak English back then wow. when I started the master. So I kind of, I was guessing what they were talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Kind wow. of. <laughs> oh my. I mean, I'm sure you knew a lot of it from having gone to school already, but still to have to do, oh my goodness. I can't even imagine. That sounds... <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. sounds very overwhelming. It was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you are now licensed in both places, but do you see clients in both uh, Mexico and Arizona and California or just in actually, the U.S.? Actually, yes. Um, I, I, have, I was going every year for providing workshops to Guadalajara. This mm. year I am not traveling yet, but I have been going every year. Wow. Um, because I want to keep my license um, also active there. Boy, mm-hmm. that's awesome. That's great mm-hmm. that you can continue to do that. Yeah, and Arizona just came because some of my Californian people due to the high cost of living here are, are li- moving to Arizona. Mm. So right now during the COVID, Arizona grant me a temporary license to be able to work with them. Oh, awesome. That's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, I've been looking into myself, just getting licensed in other states as people are sort of moving. It seems like there's a lot of transition around this time with the virus. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. This is this is who I am, and what I do. Um, I am I am working as a clinician. I do private psychotherapy, mm-hmm. and then I have a nonprofit that focuses on creating digital content. Mm. Yeah, for for the the Latino community. That's awesome. And it's it uh, therapy related digital content. All psychology. Yes, yeah. everything. I have a podcast. I have two podcasts in English and Spanish, mm-hmm. and I interview clinicians as well. And I have one podcast about the stories in Spanish about the stories of people who overcame some mental health issue. Oh wow! And and that's that's another little extra project. Mm. But basically, we do uh, the the YouTube videos. We have YouTube videos. We have uh, the podcast, and we have some groups, free groups. Nice psychoeducation, mm-hmm. and that's all in Spanish. The psychoeducation groups are in Spanish for now. Yeah, I, I want to do it in English because this I think it's going to be so much fun to do it in English as well. 
Yeah, I would imagine. And just such a broader audience. I mean, broad any, anyways, if, you know, it's amazing to have all the resources in Spanish, but then to be able to offer that to English speaking people mm -hmm. as well. That's pretty cool. I think so. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's and the what, plan. What, what got you interested in psychology? Like what was it that initially pushed you to be a psychologist? I actually didn't know what was psychology because I grew up in a very um, marginal, um, very poor area mm -hmm. in Guadalajara in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I never hear about any psychologists or what those mean or what, what they do. Mm -hmm. And when I went to with my friend to apply, we were applying, both of us, for college. Um, I wanted to be a um, computer engineer. And she said, can you go with me to the School of Psychology because I am going to submit my application. And when I sat in that garden, Elizabeth, Mm. Wow. I, I sat in the patio. It's not a beautiful patio. It was just a patio, but something called me and say, this is my school. Mm -hmm. So I asked my friend, what they do here? What they teach in psychology? And she said, well, talk to people. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> 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 so yeah. I go, I apply. And actually back then in, in the University of Guadalajara, It was 900 applicants and only 60 we were admitted. Wow. Yeah. It was very competitive. Yeah. Very competitive. Oh, my um, gosh. So my parents were kind of the listeners of the community mm -hmm. for, for free. They were just supporting the community and helping other women, my mom, and giving them tea and her, carrying their baby and stuff like that. So I guess I had, I grew up in a, in a world of psychology without knowing it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just that supportive presence. And, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It was. Yeah. So my, my father asked me one day, do they pay you for listening? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty amazing, right? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Like, well, yes, that. And do you charge them? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. My father was really like, I was doing some crime. <laughs> <laughs> right. How are you getting away with this? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Yeah. Well, the power of listening and being a calm presence with clients. Like, I feel like there is so much, I would say, very recently, just with the virus and more new clients reaching out to me, a lot of uh, what I'm hearing is, you know, I went to therapy before and it really, I just didn't click with that person. Like I didn't have that relationship. Um, but just how important that is, that for someone to feel comfortable enough to share with us that story you know, that they feel that sense of trust and belonging in that, in that space with us. I, I tell my clients, um, or I tell the prospective clients, choosing a psychologist is like choosing a good, comfortable pair of shoes. Because mm -hmm. you are going to walk in the path of, path of growth. So you want that company. Yeah, you want that comfortable company. So it doesn't matter if it takes one, two, three psychologists that you go until you find the one that is for you. Hmm. I love that metaphor that you're walking that path so your feet better be comfortable <laughs> and your soul, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And your soul, yeah. And very, very surrounded by safety. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And speaking of safety, right now, the, the world doesn't, a lot of the world doesn't feel very safe right now, particularly here in the United States, but with the coronavirus, the political environment, um, we're all experiencing a level of anxiety, but I'm wondering um, what you're seeing with your clients. <sighs> what I am seeing with my clients is a lot of uncertainty with I, I guess everybody, not only not only my clients, yeah, they have a great deal of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But something is special about the Latino or the immigrants that they feel unsafe or not welcome in this country, some of them. Yeah. Because even 
workers that came with H1, the, the work visa or um, a student visa, they have been not safe. You know, they may, they feel that they may be kicked out of the country in any time. Mm -hmm. um, so I work with um, some engineers and their families in the Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And they need to perform because they, being in that visa, force them to be that, in that particular job. Yeah, they cannot be that, have that mobility. Right. Um, and they need to perform very well. And they still are um, anxious about the coronavirus and everything that is going on. And on top of that, it's like, are you kidding me? Mm. Now they are going against my status. Right. It's just, it's just really stressful. And and we have the fires in California. Right. So on top of that, we could go for a walk before, but now we we have days and days we will not be able to go for a walk. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the Latino community is really struggling. Yeah. So even the physical environment doesn't feel safe where before maybe there was that where you could get outside and feel less stress, but now with the fires too, on top mm -hmm. of all the other stressors. Mm. And I also work with the other side of, this is one side that the, the families that are highly educated, high performance. Mm -hmm. And the other side is the families that are um, in the industry of food, serving food, cleaning houses, mm -hmm. gardening, etc. that in the construction, that they are in the front. They are in the front lines. Oh, we think yeah. when they when when the front line we think about a doctor, mm -hmm. and we think about a nurse, but they have benefits and they have their own system to heal themselves. Yeah, yeah. but when we see the the cleaner, the house cleaner, the gardener, they sometimes are not even getting the services. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they are well, more exposed. Yeah. More exposed, and and not that. Uh, I guess I would imagine that living more on the margins, the, the, there isn't a lot, you have to show up for your job. You're not going to say like, you know what, I'm going to just go move and do something else. Like this is, this is, this is food. This is sustenance. This is keeping your house over your head or a roof yeah. over your head. Yeah. 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 So that um, is struggling. Yeah. Well, before we, we started the interview, um, you and I were kind of talking back and forth and you said that there was, in particular, you've noticed some differences within the Latinx community about um, maybe your clients who have already been in therapy for a period of time versus new clients coming into therapy. Uh, what what are you seeing there, the, the, the things that are standing out for you? I have been doing some observations um, because I have, I, I work with families, I work with couples and individuals, mm -hmm. but also I am a, a group therapist. So we opened a new branch of services this year that is psychoeducation that is not therapy mm -hmm. per se is only people talking about their feelings yeah, yeah. only okay. getting together and talking mm -hmm. so i have been doing some comparisons like people who had their process of therapy before like let's say two years of therapy mm -hmm. uh, or they themselves are this personality that i keep looking for self-care services and this is one group and then the second group that I put is people who were severely traumatized. And in the first group, there are people who are severely traumatized too. But in the second group is all of them severely traumatized because they were victims of crime. We work with victims of crime very often. Okay. And uh, they had one year, at least one year in therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the third group is uh, victims of crime who had two months in therapy. And there is a four group that they were in the waiting list or they didn't find services so they didn't show up. Yeah. Okay. So the, so the first group, it, it came, actually it came naturally because immediately, the first week when we were put into shelter mm -hmm. in a stay home, we, the very first week we were able to 
uh, call people and say, we are going to do this group, this get together Zoom. Who wants to be? So this group jump, the first, the first one, the first that are always looking for self-care, that they already passed therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They jump and say, I am in. Ah. And we put a group, Elizabeth, of five countries. Wow. Uh, we had uh, all of them Spanish speaking. It was in Spanish, the group. Mm -hmm. So we have Argentina, Mexico, Venezuela. Um, uh, we have that also Spain or Ecuador or a little bit from Peru and the United States. So probably wow. five, six countries. Okay. And uh, we get together and we start talking, uh, trying to make sense of what hap was happening because the, the first or the second week, everything was so confusing. Oh, so confusing. Uh -huh. yes. And yeah. painful. And mm -hmm. who is attacking us? Where is coming from? How we were trying to make sense of that. Mm -hmm. And we start gathering information, being checking sources like what is a reliable source and mm. we start learning together because I also did a new mm -hmm. how to ask for social distance how to be assertive in asking for social distance mm. how to not to get near to people who didn't have the mask and how to talk uh, about death uh, with our family members yeah because the possibility of death was really real so how, how we talk about death, how we talk about the virus, how we talk about everything. Mm -hmm. So every, and then the policies of every government. So we have different countries in the group. So we were able to talk about the policies of every government, whether Colombia put for some time uh, stay home and only women could go out and only men could go out in the different day. Mm -hmm. So that opened an unsafe area for women going out alone. Right. And stuff like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we start comparing policies between governments and we kind of decide, everybody was deciding what was best, best for them. Mm. And then start teaching people to apply for services like um, asking for money for rent mm -hmm. or the business owners, how to ask for um, the government uh, payment protection. Right. Or a student or a business loan or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that was the first group. The first group, they jump on it. We were really terrified, everybody. But we were gathering information and, and getting together. After two, mo two months, we kind of start laughing about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We start like the resilience came in. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, whether we are. Uh, surviving this or not, we are going to do the best we can. Mm -hmm. So they start being very resilient and playful and joyful. Mm. So, so they start supporting each other. Yeah. And then the second group, um, it was one year in therapy. It, it was hit hard. Out of seven people or eight people, 60% got the coronavirus. Wow. Because they are the front lines, yeah, of the, yeah. Of the food industry or all of this. So mm -hmm. we literally pull like, no, you cannot stop your sessions. You need to answer the phone. So some, I remember one person was uh, very, very sick and had the phone looking at the wall because she didn't want us to look at her, her face. Wow. But she say, uh, just listening to you guys is, is helping me during the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only service that she was getting was our phone call. Wow. Wow. And, and we were like surviving that uh, complete families that they all got the coronavirus and they were all in quarantine, mm. very sick. And so that was the second group. And they got, they got some resilience because they had one year in therapy. Okay. So, but their, their original trauma was magnified yeah so everything i don't know you see with your clients everything I has have. been magnified yeah. yeah yeah so they 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 had very hard time mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but still they were together they are together they are like they take like religion their group session yeah and they stay there mm -hmm. and and then i have the third group which was two months in therapy kind of learning to trust each other that the mistrust, Elizabeth, kicked in so hard. Mm -hmm. 
wow. that they couldn't even share anything because they were afraid that somebody is there to attack them. Mm. So I couldn't, I actually dissolved that group and send them into individual sessions mm -hmm. because they couldn't trust each other. Yeah. And they were having more panic attacks, more, more anxiety attacks, more everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have the resilience yet. Right. Yeah. And yeah. they were not laughing, definitely. No, I would. No, <laughs> they really were not laughing, not, not able to enjoy, not able to be, to achieve gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, when I told them about, we are grateful because we have a, a, a place to stay and they were like, what you're talking about? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was, that was really, really hard. That sounds uh, really hard. So the first group, the, they are still together. The first and the second group, they are still together. Mm -hmm. They have navigated so much better all the all these ups and downs of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, they are really light. Something very interesting, Elizabeth, is in the first group, we never, never have a technical problem with internet or with anything. Hmm. That's very interesting because when we were, I remember uh, for, I went through a phase of testing different services to provide therapy online to Janu. Yeah. <laughs> Probably many of us therapists did. Right. And this group, whatever service I put them through, it was always working. Hmm. I think it was their energy and their lightness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and they were there and they were on time and everything. Hmm. And I start telling them none of these persons in this group had got infected. Oh, wow. Yeah. None of them, because whether they learn so quickly to mm -hmm. take care of themselves, to set boundaries, um, or whether they start doing a lot of exercise or self-care because we were more motivating each other. Mm -hmm. um, or they were disciplinated, probably. They right. came with that already. Mm -hmm. So they were actually, they are doing actually better. And still, like somebody yesterday say, three members of my family had got coronavirus recently. Mm -hmm. And they still, at, at the, uh, after one hour, we kind of, start being light and laugh and, mm -hmm. and be playful and so it doesn't matter how heavy life is going they are better yeah they can find some joy some gratitude yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly they can find some gratitude mm. there was one day elizabeth that one done two people four it was four people came to the group and say we it's impossible we cannot get uh, money for our rent because when we are calling, it's after one hour and nobody pick up the phone. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, the Catholic Charities was helping to provide uh, rent. Um, so no, it's impossible. We cannot do after one hour, I give up. Hmm. And the, it was one Catholic Charities person in the group and say, yeah, we are receiving so and so many calls per minute. Wow. So it's impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said, only keep trying. And when I ask, when I ask the rest of the group, what do you think? And people from other countries say, wow, you guys have help for, for rent. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they start telling them, they were like so fired up and say, even, even if take me 24 hours, even if I put my, all my children in the line, even if I take turns, I never will leave that phone. <laughs> yeah. That phone call until I get the service. Mm. So they help this our uh, women here in in the Bay Area to realize how lucky they are to have some promise of service. Yeah? Yes, yes. Wow. So by the, by the next session, four of them got into the system. Hmm. <laughs> That's the, amazing. The other from the other countries say like, put some music, dance. You can do it here. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. Make it, make it more about self-care, add some fun to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they kind of, they are teaching each other. <laughs> yeah. But that perspective of that, the, how fortunate they were to, that the potential for help was there. 
really yeah. shifted it for them. Yeah. Somebody in Venezuela said, we really have no food. Forget about coronavirus. Coronavirus is kind of the luxury here to be worried. Oh they had no food. They got, they, they, were, dealing, they were dealing with other, um, other immunodeficiency sickness. I don't remember what it was, but they were dealing with something else when the coronavirus hit. Mm. And, and she say, well, just sitting and talking to you guys and having internet for today is just a blessing. Mm. So she very often help us to the rest to be grateful. Yeah, yeah. And, and she was the most happy and smiling. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, mm-hmm. and I think uh, I've done some group work myself and just the power of um, group support that, that, you know, different perspectives, but also, you know, sometimes there are people who tend to think more negatively or more positively and just having that balance to give you a different perspective on what you're struggling with is so powerful. Yes. Mm. yes. Actually, I have the private clients who can, no problem, they easily can pay their session. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. They did as much progress as the group, even though I keep begging them to come to the group. Yeah. Hmm. And the group was free. Yeah. So, wow. But they, they decided not to. They did progress, but definitely not as fast. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Boy. Well, that sounds like an amazing group. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, all of them are very grateful for you for making it happen and being a part of it. We needed it. Yeah. We needed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so because there is very real, there are very real threats for uh, immigrants living here in the United States, whether you're Latin American or Latinx or other from other countries, There, it doesn't feel very welcoming, one, as, you know, from my perspective to how, you know, or just immigrants are looked at here. I, 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 how are you helping, you know, that the virus, like the, the, the fires, that there are threats, there are things that are making us anxious for sure. Um, I know perspective is one of it. Like what, what are some of the things you can be grateful for, but how, how do you best help the clients that are coming to you feeling anxious and stressed and frustrated? Well, I have been working a lot in building resilience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in every possible way that you can build resilience, whether it's working in self confidence, um, in trusting a uh, source, whatever source you have of, for spirituality, mm-hmm. whatever is your God, whoever is your God, trusting, getting to know better your God, yeah, to, yeah. to have faith in something. Yeah. Um, the power of community, the simple, simple activities like keep celebrating birthdays through Zoom, keep being creative, creative to celebrate, to, keep, to stay together. So kind of pulling their own resources for resilience. And also I have been doing something lately that is, I call the t- transference of knowledge. Hmm. What I am doing is let's pull every possible area of your life that you have been successful in the past and pull that information and apply to this that is new. Hmm. Yeah. So every possible, whether you got a job, you got a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or you got into college or whatever, hmm. how you did it, what part of you, what personality and how this can apply to this situation right now. Hmm. Because before the fear of being immigrant, it would it was mostly in they were or undocumented. I will not say illegal, undocumented yes. immigrants. Mm-hmm. Uh, immigrants, they were afraid. But now during this year, even permanent residents have been even mm-hmm. well. Even I am a citizen. Uh, I am a naturalized citizen, and at some point, it was something against naturalized citizens. So it's like, it really took us all by surprise to be feeling that unsafe. Yeah. 
in this country and add the pain of the racism yes. conversations that we had during this year. I bet. So I have, I never have, I have 30 years working in therapy mm -hmm. and I have working in other emergencies, but this is, this is one of the times that I see how hard our population is suffering. Mm. This is this this year has been hitting us hard. Yeah, yeah. To all of us. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Somebody from Peru told me, Carmen, say most psychologists are not working in Peru because they are, they they don't have the resources. They are dealing with their own issues. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have an office hour. I call the office hour and everybody from every part of the world, they can ask questions. So this is why I learn from other countries. Mm -hmm. And she say, she was having anxiety attacks and she said, that literally, there is no services I have been looking. And our, our community of colleagues has been also being hit hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So there weren't people that she could turn to even if, yeah, because yeah. it wasn't available. Mm -hmm. Oh, so for someone who, a listener who is, has tuning in and, and is struggling and really doesn't know how to find the resources like your group or, or, um, other potential resources for, uh, Spanish speaking, uh, residents here in the United States, what, what, are there resources you would recommend for them? Yes, this is the time to to listen to podcasts. Mm. This is the time, I think. Yeah. Uh, because, and let me tell you why, uh, I, I, I'm creating content in video and in podcasts, yeah? Mm -hmm. but, but this is the time for podcasts because when you have a podcast, you can download the episode to your phone and you don't need to use internet so your children can be safely working from, yeah, or yeah, yeah, or somebody that really needs the internet at the moment. You just download your episode and keep doing your whatever you need to do during the day. Yeah, yeah. And there is, a, not that many people know, but there is a lot of information in podcast content. Yes, so much. So much and so wonderful. Mm -hmm. and even even if you want, of course, listen to podcasts in mental health, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but even if you listen to podcasts about stories, about funny, about uh, whatever you want to listen, is yeah. is the time to feel companionship. Mm -hmm. yeah? And mm -hmm. podcasts give you that companionship. I love that. Um, so I have a list of podcasts in mental health. I will send you the the link. Oh, awesome. I, I remember, I think there are like 20, 25. Slowly, when I am learning about new podcasts, I am putting them there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I have this list. And any kind of source of fun you can, you can get this time. Like yeah. Fun movies, fun listening, fun everything. Even mm. go and paint your garden or do gardening or... Yes. Pain outside your sidewalk, whatever you need to do, mm. keep dancing. Yes, yes. Find, find YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a great resource. I, I keep finding new people that are teaching me yoga or how to dance or this lesson or that lesson. <laughs> yes, yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Finding some joy even when it's hard. Yes. Mm. There is, there is one, um, source one resource that we actually put immediately also the first week it is a seven days um, course on emotional freedom mm. i did that this little bit of seven days of course and is uh, in our website you go to www.emotionsinharmony.org slash challenge awesome or oh, slash reto if you speak Spanish and they and you come up with this free seven day course. And I, another resource that is very valuable in this time is the application Insight Timer. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. You are I in inside that. timer. Uh, I am an inside timer. A lot of clinicians are in inside timer. Yes. And inside timer gives you 60,000 meditations for free. So great. So great. So this is my, is the only app that I allow my phone during the night. Yeah. Mm, so nice. if I cannot sleep or something, I put some music mm. and perfect. Yeah. I just relax and, and do so. You can find any kind of meditation. You that really suits. can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. from two minutes to, or even probably one minute to long, mm-hmm. like 45 or an hour. Yeah. To an stuff. hour to two hours of music yeah. to whatever you want. And lately they are putting yoga. Yeah. They, they are adding yoga there. And they have live sessions. If you go to Insight Timer, just type Carmen Roman and you will find uh, my profile there. And I'm sure you have your profile there too. So they can find me there in Insight Timer too. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I will include all the links that uh, you mentioned in the show notes and links to your website and apps and all of that. Yeah. Your podcasts and all of it. Mm -hmm. I created a nine anxiety course for Insight Timer, 10 days anxiety course, um, and they publish it in Spanish. But mm. this, in the next couple of days, probably is going to be published in English as well. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I know yeah. we would, had talked about that earlier. That's mm-hmm. great. Well, I, I will be excited to listen to that so I can recommend it to my clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very it was cool. a very good piece of work. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I bet. Well, Carmen, thank you so, so much for taking the time to talk to us today and to share your insight and your knowledge and your presence. Thank you. (laughs) It was really fun. (laughs) Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dr. Carmen Roman. Carmen uh, is a fellow therapist, and she and I have been a part of multiple Facebook groups for therapists. So I feel like I've known her for a long time. And yet my interview on her podcast, Emotions and Harmony, and our conversation here today on my podcast were the first times we've ever talked face-to-face, had a conversation um, outside of sort of Facebook likes and things like that. So it was really great to get to know her and her work. I'm just in awe of her continued expansion of her services and helping the Latinx communities here and around the world. I hope you will check out her website, her resources, and her podcast. Really, really a great podcast, Emotions in Harmony. So I hope you'll check that out. I hope this week you will find some moments of joy, some things to be grateful for, and ways to bring more positivity and fun into your daily life. I will be keeping you posted about my upcoming coaching program, and I hope that if you are interested, you will reach out to me through progressioncounseling.com or womanwarriors.com. There is a contact form on all the pages to reach out to me, and I would love to hear from you. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Ciao for now from This Woman Warrior. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Woman Warriors Podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guest profiles at womanwarriors.com.